Good Wednesday evening and welcome to the NCW Life Evening News. I'm Grant Olson. Here are a few of the stories we have coming up for you tonight. The Wenatchee School Board and new superintendent Corey Callahar heard a presentation on the budget for the 2023-2024 school year last night. After a lengthy closure, the renovated entrance to the Chelan County Courthouse Complex is now open. A red flag warning is in effect until 10 o'clock tonight as our hot and dry weather continues. The November election will see sitting Wenatchee City Council member Mike Poyer against former council member Brian Campbell for the Wenatchee mayorship. That's left open by the end of Mayor Frank Kuntz's third and final term. Poyer drew 45.7% of nearly 5,100 votes cast in the citywide race. A five-point lead over Campbell is the second highest vote getter. The two men advanced to the general, leaving third candidate James McLaughlin, a Wenatchee builder and developer with a 14% share. In the only three-way race for Wenatchee School Board, incumbent Martin Barron drew 56.5% of the vote over his hot nearest challenger, Tricia Cleek, who held just over 36% in the Tuesday count. The finish eliminates John Lacasse from consideration in the general, earning 7.3%. Outside Wenatchee, two other mayoral seats went to multi-candidate primaries. Chelan City Council member Aaron McCardle scored a 32% upset against incumbent Mayor Bob Getty, who goes on to the November ballot with a 29% vote share. And in Leavenworth, Mayor Carl Floria will face Rich Brinkman, a Wenatchee Valley College educator who formerly worked as chief administrator for both the city of Wenatchee and Leavenworth. Brinkman's 28% vote share edges out Becky Sabito, whose campaign against denser residential zoning left her with 22.4%. Meanwhile, the Chelan County Auditor's Office said there are only 127 ballots left uncounted after the first round yesterday, making the early results definitive. Individuals with qualifying drug possession felony charges can now seek financial reimbursement. Two years ago, the Washington Supreme Court Blake case ruled that the state's previous felony law on drug possession as unconstitutional and it did not require intent or knowledge of possession. The ruling of State v. Blake is estimated to affect over 200,000 drug possession felony charges as well as 125,000 additional misdemeanor charges specifically in relation to marijuana possession and made it possible for qualifying convictions to be expunged. The administrative office of the courts then began establishing the Blake Refund Bureau as a mechanism for qualifying individuals to seek financial reimbursement. With operations now complete, individuals can now apply for financial reimbursement related to qualifying charges through a self-guided centralized portal through the Washington Courts website. The Wenatchee School Board and new superintendent Corey Callahar heard a presentation on the budget for the 2023-24 school year last night. Sean Fitzgerald, the district's executive director of business and finance, broke down the $130.9 million budget that will be adopted at the later August 22nd regular meeting. In his presentation, Fitzgerald projected that the Associated Student Body Fund, which is financed through fees, fines, and donations from events and activities will continue to increase as involvement returns to pre-pandemic levels. He also projected a decline in about 100 students for the upcoming year and presented the four-year staffing plan, which reflects the reduction budget plan for the 2023-24 and 2024-25 school years was enacted due to an $8 million shortfall. Fitzgerald explained how the district will handle the staffing budget. For 2023-24 and 24-25, the projected budgets reflect the budget reduction plan that was enacted this year. We will continue to use those numbers as targets, but not absolute goals as we continue to evaluate our budget during the school year. Additionally, our focus will continue to be on the position itself and not personnel, because an open position also, if we reduce an open position, that would also be considered a budget reduction as we take that into account. 
Likewise, our 25, 26, and 26, 27 staffing forecasts are based on the assumption that enrollment decline and revenue sources will eventually stabilize, which I will go into further detail in a later slide. Staffing will continue to be allocated based on anticipated enrollment and adjusted as necessary. All positions will continue to be analyzed based on need and funding throughout the 23-24 school year. A town hall this morning at the American Legion helped connect Wenatchee veterans with the state and federal health care resources. Among the speakers, 8th District Congresswoman Kim Schreier. Veterans affected by toxic chemical events and overseas conflicts are eligible for new and broader health coverage, but there's an August 9th deadline for enrollment. That new coverage is courtesy of the PACT Act, which Schreier supported in Congress and which became law last year. This was such a big deal for us to pass. I can't even believe that there was a hang up in the Senate when it came to passing this bill because this is the right thing that we owe to you. That if you put your life on the line, you were exposed to toxins uh, in, the, in the line of duty, whether that was Agent Orange or toxic burn pits, that if you were exposed to something that put you at high risk disease and then you got something we need to be extending a hand to say we're going to help you and you don't have to have the burden of proving a connection which is darn near impossible to do and so there is a list of 20 plus diseases that we know are associated at higher rates in veterans and those are just on the list and if you have been diagnosed with one of those things you will get care through the va when we come back, the Moses Lake Police Department is instituting new surveillance cameras to monitor local traffic, and people of all ages with type 1 diabetes are invited to a barbecue in Lincoln Rock State Park this Saturday. I'm Grant Olson, and you're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Enjoy the sounds of summer from your very own pool and spa. Blue Lagoon is now scheduling pool installations for this summer. Call today to schedule a free consultation for a custom San Juan fiberglass pool. And let the experts at Blue Lagoon handle the construction, installation, and regular maintenance. Turn your boring backyard into vacation paradise this summer with industry-leading San Juan pool. No need to go off the deep end. Relax knowing you're in great hands with Blue Lagoon Pool and Spa. Hi, I'm Brian Campbell, and I'd appreciate your vote for Mayor of Wenatchee. Born and raised in Wenatchee, I've experienced a lot of change over the years. Businesses have been devastated by the pandemic. People are concerned for their family's safety. Parents are concerned about their children's education and parents' rights. And people are struggling to make ends meet and find affordable housing. With my past service on our city council and 12 years of meeting attendance, over 100 years of combined community service, and over 40 years in the financial services and real estate industries, I'm uniquely qualified to provide common sense solutions to these challenges. Paid for by Brian Campbell for Mayor. The Moses Lake Police Department is instituting new surveillance cameras to monitor local traffic. 20 license plate reading cameras built by the Flock Safety Corporation were installed in June to read license plates on passing vehicles and detect those that have been reported stolen. The cameras were paid for through a $50,000 grant. City officials say the volume of car thefts in and around Moses Lake is behind that decision. When a camera detects a stolen vehicle, it's designed to alert local police with identification of the vehicle, its location, and the direction it's traveling. After a lengthy closure, the renovated entrance to the Chelan County Courthouse Complex is now open. The secure vestibule offers a single point of entry for almost all county offices and two adjoining buildings, including courts, jail, the auditor's office, and the treasurer. The work started in late 2022 and was originally scheduled to be complete in June. All told, the new entryway cost the county about $1.5 million. People of all ages with type 1 diabetes are invited to a barbecue in Lincoln Rock State Park this Saturday, August 5th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. It's hosted by the Wenatchee Type 1 Diabetes Support Group. And yes, there will be gluten-free options available for anyone who's wondering. If you're unable to make it on Saturday, the local support group holds regular meetings on the fourth Thursday of each month from 6.15 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. And those meetings are held at 1705. North Miller Avenue in Wenatchee. 
Coming up next, the Washington State Department of Transportation is set out to minimize vehicle versus wildlife incidents on the state highways, including right here in North Central Washington. We'll tell you how in tonight's feature story. A red flag warning is in effect until 10 o'clock tonight with more hot and dry weather on the way. I'll have all the details in your complete North Central Washington weather forecast. That and much more still to come tonight. Please stay with us. Pybus Public Market is on the move to make parking, dining, shopping, and events an even better experience for our community. Check out the progress that has already been made towards the revitalization. The Westside Project is well on its way, but we need your help to get over the finish line. All donations are greatly appreciated and can be made online at our website or in person at the business office. We want to thank those who have already partnered with us. You are helping make the place we love a better place for our community to meet. Hi everybody, Dan Coos alongside Jesse Coble from Alpine Air. My heat pump is, there's like steam coming out of it. It's making weird noises. Is this something that I need to be concerned about? No, Dan, that's normal operation. Refrigeration technology steals heat from the outside, transfers it to the inside, and it creates frost on your heat pump. The defrost cycle melts that off, which creates steam and a little bit of noise. That makes sense. Turn to the experts at Carrier and Alpine Air. For heat and air, call Alpine Air. Thanks, Jesse. Thank you. Welcome back to the NCW Life Evening News. Nobody likes to crash their vehicle into a deer and the deer don't appreciate it much either. The Washington State Department of Transportation is set out to minimize vehicle versus wildlife incidents on the state's highways, including right here in North Central Washington. In tonight's feature story, NCW Life's Dan Koontz visited with two DOT specialists to talk about their agency's efforts. Statewide, we've actually had a decrease in collisions, uh, or at least reported wildlife carcass removals in the year 2022. We're down to just under 4,000 reported uh, deer collisions in that year, where in previous years we we're closer to 5,000. But locally, I can't say for sure if it's up or down, uh, but this is a hot spot for collisions in general. There's some things that lead to that. I mean, good migration routes, you've got readily available sources of water, uh, good residential plants, farms right up against the highway. Uh, a lot of things like that play into that. Um, a lot of traffic. And, and like you're saying, seasonally, we, we get a lot of hits around here seasonally. And some of that is um, migration movement. Um, deer's coming out of winter range into, into summer, spring range. Um, you might get some patterns in, in traffic as well. Higher, higher traffic around Labor Day and Memorial Day. So US 97, roughly between the towns of Riverside and Tenasket, is the worst wildlife vehicle collision area in the state, and that's based on carcass removal data collected by WashDOT and the Department of Fish and Wildlife Salvage Program. About 2019, one mile of fencing was installed at the only pre-existing bridge that could actually be functioning as a wildlife crossing, that's Janus Bridge over the Okanagan River. And that was a part of a partnership between Conservation Northwest, WashDOT, the Department of Fish and Wildlife, the Confederated Tribes of the Colville Reservation, uh, the Mule Deer Foundation, and several other groups to get that fencing in and limit the amount of wildlife vehicle collisions in that one mile stretch and also guide the deer and other animals to that pre-existing structure. And since that fencing went in about 2019, it was late 2019, We've seen a 90% decrease in wildlife vehicle collisions within that one mile area, as well as thousands of safe wildlife crossings per year at that Janus Bridge structure. Sometime around October, we're gonna be dealing with mating season for the deer, as well as migrations beginning back to uh, lower elevations for the winter setting in. And so I think we're gonna see increased potential for collisions between you know October and November. And, and really we see increased collisions with deer through most of the winter, uh, they're pretty active. I like to think, you know, one thing that drivers can do to be a little safer is consider the side of the road like an extra lane on either end and just monitor it as you're going, you know, when you're changing lanes, act like it's another lane with vehicles that could potentially be in it and just keep a lookout uh, because if you can see animals on the side of the road before they're making a dash across the road, you have a lot more reaction time and even just a couple seconds can make a difference. 
All right, let's take a check now of your north central Washington weather forecast. Beautiful Wednesday throughout north central Washington. Things about where they should be for the second day of August. And a beautiful day, too, looking back at Lake Chelan. And look at all of the blue sky. And boy, we all enjoyed lots of blue sky today. Not much wind, at least in the Wenatchee Valley, but we are seeing some wind up in the Waterville Plateau and over in the Columbia Basin. Here's our forecast as we make our way through the rest of the week. We're talking low to mid 90s tomorrow, lower 90s for Friday. I really don't think thunderstorm activity will be an issue for us in Wenatchee until probably Saturday and especially on Sunday afternoon where we have a pretty good chance for the thunderstorms. But temperatures are going to remain hot mid 90s for Saturday and low low to mid 90s on Sunday. We'll have more details on that coming up. But far as today goes, yeah, 92 today, 90 yesterday. So we did warm up a couple of degrees today. 90 is our normal and that was uh, that's what our normal is for August 2nd. Our record high it was only three degrees for our high. That was probably one of the colder highs ever recorded in Wenatchee. I believe our high 103 and that was set back in 1961. 64 this morning, our overnight low. And that's just where we should be for this time of year. 48 is our record low and that was set in 1964. Sunrise 540 this morning and it sets tonight at 833. All right, let's take a look at what we can expect as we get you into Thursday and it's going to warm up even a little bit more tomorrow. 94s for Moses Lake, Afreda and Quincy, about where you were today. Wenatchee will probably go up another click tomorrow to 93, 92 for Eniat, a warm one in Chelan, and the warm spot tomorrow up in Okanagan County. You folks in OMAC, you will see a high of about 95 degrees. As we take a look at our surface loop tonight, we'll expect clear skies, still a ridge way up into British Columbia, but there is an area of low pressure in Montana and one down in Oregon, and that will change things for us by this weekend, but until then, it's going to be a hot one. Sunny and hot for Thursday. Not many clouds around for relief for Thursday. High temperatures will get into those low and mid 90s for high temperatures tomorrow afternoon. To end our work week on Friday, a few more high clouds. Here's that area of low pressure, and it's going to bring some clouds into our area, but not before we get into the mid 90s for high temperatures on Friday. So that's going to be one of our hottest days. And then by this weekend, mostly sunny for the most part. We will see isolated thunderstorms begin to develop. I think it'll mainly be along the Cascade Sunday or Saturday afternoon. Still a chance for us to pick up some of that activity, low temp or high temperatures rather, in the low 90s on Saturday. And on Sunday, a wide area of cloudiness. We'll see increasing clouds throughout the day. And look at this area of thunderstorms all through central and eastern Washington. So keep your eye on the sky on Sunday. Still hot out there with highs in the low 90s and then things calm down as we get you into money Monday sunny and hot here's the top of that ridge it will eke over into the Pacific Northwest mid 90s going to be a hot one once again to start our next work week and then for Tuesday high clouds we will cool down just a little bit a large area of low pressure is beginning to squeeze our high pressure that'll cool us down with high temperatures Tuesday near 90 degrees all right let's take a look at your seven day forecast nice and mild overnight tonight 63 93 for Thursday some high clouds Friday and 94 these are the two days we're watching as far as thunderstorms activity. We're talking about Saturday and Sunday. I think our best chance for that will be Sunday afternoon. Monday, sunny and 95. A bit cooler for Tuesday. Some high clouds with a high temperature of 90. And that's a look at your North Central Washington weather forecast. Coming up next, tonight's sports report with Eric Grandstrom and more as the NCW Life Evening News continues right after this. Hit the open roads this summer with Click It RV Superstore in Moses Lake during the Great American Sales Event. The best brands, Grand Design, Flagstaff, Thor, SMC trailers, and more. Over 1,000 RVs. Payments as low as $240 per month. $240 down. Zero payments until 2024. Up to $4,000 over JD Power for your trade in. Plus, get a Traeger Grill and Yeti cooler with purchase during the Great American Sales Event. Now at the Click It RV Superstore in Moses Lake. Off I 90 on North Frontage. Hurry in today. 
Well, up here taking in the sockeye fishery on Lake Wenatchee, Eric Grandstrom on the NCW Life Channel with sports news. Boston put the brakes on the Seattle Mariners' two-game winning streak, winning last night by a final of 6-4. to four. Hey, Eugenio Suarez had a good night at the plate, going two for four with a home run and three RBI, but it wasn't good enough as Boston erased an early deficit with a three-run fourth and two-run fifth off Seattle starter Bryce Miller. Gino past the diving numbers. J.P. being waved on. Here's the throw to the plate. He's in there. Advancing to second is Gino. Julio will hold it third. Mariners have a one-nothing lead. Shot to right field, driving back, can zone, back it up, back it up, can't get it. That'll skip it off into the stands, but the Red Sox get on the scoreboard as Arroyo takes a shot to right field. Three or four days of missed opportunities and not scoring runs with guys in scoring position. Unlike them, over the last month, they've been scoring a ton of runs, so this is good. Hopefully this jump starts to club. Might it be underway? Swing and a drive to center field. Rodriguez drifting back back he's under to make the play the ball will tag and he will be in to score the run. Doogie is walked and flied out he stings this one deep drive right center Rodriguez back to the wall and that ball's out of here home run. Doogie spanks one out number eight a two run shot watch this swing top of the zone fastball lost some velocity maybe that was the sinker that he got up in the zone and Doogie just stays behind it and does not miss. High fly ball, deep left field. Gino has left the yard. Good fives only. Home run for Gino is 15th. Middle in. He knows he's going to get at least one or two early in that battle. Look at that little side spin on that pitch. I guarantee Gino Suarez those steps walking up to the plate thinking to himself all right I'm selling out here I'm going to sit on that change up he got one. There's a drive that one hooked out to right field deep back on, toward now. the seats it's gone. Reese McGuire says hello. Welcome back huh. Red Sox with his second home run of the ball game. Here's the swing by Reese McGuire beauty. I mean got on top he was late on the heater his previous at bats and man did he make an adjustment got the head out on this one. All right, Ty hits it hard. It just stays fair. Dom's going to score. Digging for his second double tonight. Ty France got a six-point ball game. After this three-game losing streak, will hand the ball to Kenley Jansen. Swing and a miss. He struck him out, and the Red Sox win the ball game six to four. Manager Scott Service says rookie Bryce Miller is getting a few bumps and bruises as the rest of Major League Baseball figures him out. Well, certainly I think he's a much more effective pitcher when he's pitching at 94, 95. Um, you know, it, it did dip down a little bit. He came back, you know, at the end of the game, and he's a young pitcher. You know, it's going to happen, the consistency. Uh, that's what really separates uh, the guys at this level. We've seen him have some great outings where he can go out there and kind of just work through lineups, you know, with a good riding fastball. But, you know, the league knows him. He really needs the, the, the consistency of the secondary pitch. You see some decent sliders. You see some change-ups. They're just not consistent. Um, and, and that's what, you know, leads into, you know, some of the bigger innings. These uh, guys are, are major league hitters. They've been at it for a while. They are going to make adjustments. Um, and Bryce, you know, he's done a heck of a job for us. He really has. I mean, you think about both he and Brian Wu, um, you know, starting the season in double A, um, not really knowing what's going to happen. We needed those guys to step up because of injury, and they have. You know, they've given us a chance most times when they're out there to win the game, but they are going to stub their toe once in a while. You know, they're going to struggle to get through five or six innings in a ball game. So, again, he'll come back. He'll get the ball here, um, you know, five days from now, and he'll continue to give us a good effort. Ty France starting to heat things up uh, at the plate. He went three for four last night. They played the rubber match of that three-game set earlier today. We'll have highlights tomorrow morning on Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. Another American League West play yesterday. Atlanta Spencer Strider picked up his 12th win of the season, holding the Angels to a run on five hits in six and two-thirds in a 5-1 win. Michael Harris, the second homer twice for the Braves in that one. Texas starter Andrew Heaney and three relievers combined on a three-hit shutout of Chicago as the Rangers beat the White Sox 2-0. Quite a day for Houston yesterday. The Astros learned in the day earlier that uh, future Hall of Famer Justin Verlander was rejoining the team in a trade with the Mets. Then last night, Framber Valdez pitched a Hall of Fame-worthy no-hitter. It just so happened to be Houston's first no-hitter since Verlander did it 
in 2019. The Dodgers hit three home runs in a 7-3 win over the A's at Chavez Ravine. Well, the Seahawks uh, saw a dramatic uptick in the uh, style of practice yesterday at the facility in Renton. They put the pads on for the first time. There's no one in the Seattle practice facility that looks more towards the uh, hitting than the defense. Bobby Wagner, one of those who's back in a Seahawks uniform after spending a season with the Rams last year, he says he certainly feels fortunate. Um, it's been amazing, man. The fans have been amazing. Um, the first time I came back was just uh, something that was really special, um, the way that they welcomed me. Obviously, coming back was, was just as cool, and um, being able to connect with the community, being able to connect with with everybody because, you know, like two years ago, like my, like I had got hurt on the last play. So I thought my last, um, my last time in the Seahawks jersey was gonna be that play. And um, I'm, I'm blessed and happy it's not that. Defensive coordinator Clint Hurt says, it's great to have a guy like Wagner back on the defensive side of the huddle because he's a calming influence. That's big because you, you have a calming influence. Um, and it's not, a, you know, Jordan did that last year. Obviously, uh, Cody had experience with that last year, and, it's, and they did great for what they had to do. But it's different. You're talking about a Hall of Fame player, you know, and, this, and obviously he has a calming influence and voice. So when he says something in the huddle, everything comes down. So it's been great having him. Seahawks have a mock game coming up on Friday at Lumen Field, and they'll be playing a week from today in their first preseason game against the Minnesota Vikings. Well, the Wenatchee Apple Sox suffered their worst loss of the season last night in the first of a three-game set in Bellingham, falling to the Bells by a final of 12-1. to Bellingham scored early and often, building a 4-0 lead through four innings of off of Wenatchee starter Felix Schlade. The Apple Sox pitching staff struggled finding the strike zone all night long, according to the voice of the Apple Sox, Joel Norman. The Wenatchee Apple Sox dropped the first game of their six-game road trip to the Bellingham Bells by a 12-1 score on Tuesday night at Joe Martin Field. Wenatchee did not get on the board until the ninth inning when there were two outs recorded. A ground out scored the leadoff batter to reach the inning, Fred Buxton. And Wenatchee's uh, walks really hurt them. They, their pitching staff combined to walk 11 men in the game, and they dropped the first game of the three-game set against Bellingham. About the only good note from the game for the Sox was that the reigning West Coast League Player of the Week, Frankie Carney, picked up a base hit in the first inning to extend his hitting streak to 11 games, which is the third longest by an Apple Sox player this season. But Angie will attempt to even the series up with the Bells up on Wednesday night when they face them at 6.35 p.m. With your Apple Sox update, I'm Joel Norman. Bellingham has taken three of four from Wenatchee so far this season. The Sox try to turn that tight tonight at 635. You can hear the call with uh, Joel on Sunny FM Radio. Victoria edged a little closer to Wenatchee in the second half standings with an 8-6 win over Nanaimo last night. Michael Croslin's two-run single highlighted a four-run fifth inning for the Harbor Cats as they pulled to within a game and a half of the Apple Sox in the standings. Kelowna brought 11 men to the plate in a five-run sixth inning to beat Kamloops 5-4. Four of the Falcons' five runs were unearned as Kelowna collected just three hits at the game. Matthew Ridsdale continues to pitch well for Edmonton as he threw seven innings of one-run ball with seven strikeouts to the Riverhawks' 7-1 win over Port Angeles. Tyler Quinn's grand slam home run completed a five-run eighth inning for Corvallis as the Knights came from behind to beat Portland 6-1. Marcus Titiali was 3-for-6 with a home run and 3 RBI to lead Cowlitz over Yakima Valley 12-7. Nick Siemens and Jackson Nicholas each scored three runs as Richfield topped Walla Walla 9-2. Bend walked off against Springfield in 14 innings last night on Luca DePaula's two-run home run. Well, Wenatchee's lead in the WCL North Division is just a game and a half, as we mentioned, over Victoria after last night's loss. Kelowna edged a little closer as well and is just three games out of first place. Here on a beautiful day at Lake Wenatchee, I'm Eric Grandstrom on the NCW Live Channel. Have a happy Wednesday. And that will do it for our newscast tonight. For more on these stories and other news from around North Central Washington, you can find us on Facebook or our website at ncwlife.com. And remember, if you see news happening, we'd like to hear from you. You can send us an email at news at ncwlife.com or give us a call at 888-6295. I'm Grant Olson. Thanks so much for being with us and have a great night.
I'm Jenny Rojanasatian, host of Network TV, and I'm looking for you, our next guest, to come on air live at the NCW Life Studios. We would love to feature your business, organization, or nonprofit and share about the work or innovation happening inside of your organization. It's super easy to come on air. You just need to send us an email, info at ncwtech.org. That's I-N-F-O at ncwtech.org.